Lately, I have been obsessed with trying to improve my audience retention in the first 30 seconds of my videos. Why? Because first of all, YouTube counts one view if somebody watches 30 seconds of your video. But more importantly, if you can get people to watch the first 30 seconds, it dramatically improves your chances that they're going to watch the rest of your video. And not just that, but the YouTube algorithm gets a signal that, oh, somebody's watched more than 30 seconds. I better show this video out to more people. So it's just like a win, win, win situation. If you can get people to watch more than 30 seconds of your video. So of course, YouTube has a data point for this. And at the 30 second mark, it tells you the percentage of people still watching your content as part of your audience retention graph. Now, YouTube knows that most people bail out from a video within the first 30 seconds if they're not interested. So if they stay 30 seconds or more, that is a sign to the YouTube algorithm that people are interested in your content. And that tells YouTube that this might be a video to push out further to new audiences. So my goal and your goal should be to get more people watching the first 30 seconds of your video. So how can we do that by reading our audience retention graph? So what I'm going to do now is I am going to actually read some of my audience retention graphs and I want you to take a look at how I'm reading them. What are the things I'm taking away from them so that you can use this uh, analysis in your videos, look at your audience retention graphs to improve your retention in the first 30 seconds. Okay, so to get to your audience retention graph, go to any YouTube video of yours. And then in the overview tab, just scroll down until you hit audience retention. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is play this video and see what is causing this huge drop in retention here. You can see this video is getting 55% audience retention in the first 30 seconds, which is pretty awful <laughs> for my video. So let's see what's happening. So I'm going to play this. And as I play this, you can see the retention graph. So there's text on screen, it's scrolling by, and you can see that the audience retention here is dropping 86%, still dropping, 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 majorly dropping. Okay. Now there's a video montage with music playing and the audience retention is still dropping there. Okay, at this point, you see that? That is starting to stabilize just slightly. So you can see that it was going like this. And then at this point, about 20 seconds in, it went like, whoop. <laughs> okay, that's how closely I look at the graph, okay? Okay, so what happened at 20 seconds? You see me on screen, right? Before that, it was text, it was blank, it was music, it was a video montage. But at 20 seconds, you see me come on screen and that's when the retention stabilizes. So let's just watch the rest of what happens here. So it's stabilized a bit at this point. You can see this, right? So that's about 30 seconds, but you can see that there is a dip here and then it picks up and then the rest of the video kind of stabilizes around this point. So what's happening over here? The Pearl of the Atlantic. Okay, so I actually start talking. So this is the point in the video where the where this upward little thing happens where the retention goes from 45 to 47 this is when i actually start talking in the video so let's talk about what is happening here so my main takeaways are first of all that people need to see me on screen um, just having a montage of unrelated things perhaps does not work for my specific channel's audience retention okay uh, long music only intros, again, do not work on my channel as far as this particular video is concerned. The retention stabilizes the minute people see me and hear me in the video. So I want to prioritize that. Until people see me and hear me, retention drops, 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 drops. So in order to improve my retention, I'm going to have to come on camera way faster or sooner in the video than I did in this one. And finally, sometimes, you know, um, you got to create, but your audience might not love what you're creating. You might love it. So in this video, I love the video montage. I love the introduction, but my audience, not so much. So in the next video, what I want to do, the takeaway that I want to take from this is 
I want to have a balance of doing the things that I love, but also giving people what they want. So in the next video that I made, I took this audience retention graph to heart and I changed things up and I want to show that video to you. This is the video that I made after looking at the previous retention graph. So let's look at this video's audience retention. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see here, the first 30 seconds, it is 66% retention. And in the old one, it was 55% at the 30 second mark. So clearly I did something right. I went from 55% to 66% in this particular video. So let's take a look at what I did right in this video. Educational videos changed my life, literally. Now in the last... So you can see that immediately I started talking so people knew it was my video. They could hear my voice and I'm not talking about just anything. I'm talking about the topic itself. So I get straight into the content. The first words are educational videos, which is the topic, right? And I'm talking about how they changed my life. And three seconds in, you can see that I am showing what I'm talking about. So it's not just me doing random things, but I'm being very specific with what I'm talking about. Last video, I showed you that I moved to Portugal on the basis of my YouTube channel and creating educational videos. Now, if you look at my channel, I have created almost 300 educational videos on my YouTube channel. Now, these educational videos have Okay, so we're 19 seconds in and retention is looking pretty good at 72% so far. Let's just complete the first 30 seconds. Allowed me to land brand deals, get affiliate commissions, get coaching clients, make course sales and get speaking gigs and so much more. I wouldn't be here without these educational. Okay, so full 30 seconds in my takeaways are People need to see me on screen. People need to be able to hear uh, me on screen. I need to be talking about the topic that the video uh, title is about. And I can have a montage. I can have like, you know, B-roll and stuff happening, but it should relate in some way to the video. And I may be, I should be able to show what I am talking about as well. So there does need to be some movement in that first 30 seconds to keep people uh, keep people's attention and keep that retention high. So 66% is really good retention um, compared to the 55% that we had earlier. Okay, the next audience retention graph I want to read is this one. Now in this one, you can see that at the 30 second mark, audience retention is some of the highest that I've had. It's 71%. YouTube says 71% of viewers are still watching at around the 30 second mark, which is above typical. So this video did better than normal on my channel, the what is average for my channel. And I kind of want to understand why that happened. So let's see what I do and say in this video. In the first 30 seconds. If I type into Google, what's the best time to publish YouTube videos? The first result is terrible advice. Okay, so the first thing you may have noticed in there is that I said the words, if I type into Google, and then on the screen, I actually showed myself typing that phrase into Google. So that seemed to really help with the audience retention that I am saying something and I'm going into search engine and typing that out. Um, and then you can see that I'm kind of switching between myself on screen and showing what those Google search results actually are. It says, the best time to post in general is at 5 p.m., though you can still get success until 9 p.m. before you see serious diminishing returns. Sundays are the optimal days to post a video on YouTube, either earlier in the morning or later in the- So it's pretty stable at this point. It's dropping slightly. Please. Do not listen. There was a bit of a censored beep in there that helped with, with retention. In this video, I'll show you what the best time to publish your YouTube videos is based on your... Okay, so that's about 30 seconds in. And there are a couple of things that happened in that initial phase. So the first thing that happened was that let's type this into Google, cause people to glue in into my video because apparently everyone wanted to see what I was typing into Google. So that's trick number one that I learned. Trick number two is that because I typed that in the rest of this video, uh, got a massive boost in retention because the first 30 seconds did so well. This entire video was lifted up and I have about 40% average view retention on this video, um, which is above average for educational videos on my channel. So what I wanted to do was test out my theory and I wanted to see if 
Does this happen? Was this like a fluke? Or is this going to happen every time I say the words, let's type it this into Google? And I wanted to test that out. So here's what I did. I created another video in which it, during the first 30 seconds, I actually said this phrase again. And here's what happened. So here's that video and let's play. You can see this also has a pretty good average percentage viewed. And at the first 30 second mark, people are what? 68% are still watching at around the 30 second mark. So let's see if I said the magic phrase. Do faceless videos impact credibility? I got this awesome question and I want to answer this. But before I answer this, I want to go to Google and, and find out what are the answers that are already floating on the internet. So do. So we went to Google <laughs> and credibility. And I want to go to the people also ask section because I want to see what else our people ask. Just going to Google again. Is it better to not show your face on YouTube? Hmm. Okay, so that's about 30 seconds in. And yes, again, every time I went to Google, type stuff in, look stuff up, people seem to really want to see what I'm looking at in my videos. So that it wasn't a fluke the first time. That means that every single time I create a video and in the first 30 seconds, if I am able to show what's happening on my screen and you as the viewer can sort of connect with, oh, okay, this is what she's going to do. Now she's going to go do this, but we can see what she's doing. That creates an instant connection and that causes my audience to want to know what happens next. Okay, so we have seen two examples of things that work on my channel in terms of audience retention. We have seen that I need to be on screen, I need to be talking, I'm showing my screen and sharing what's happening and all of those things are really, really helping retention. But this next graph I'm gonna show you is gonna show you one of my videos with the lowest audience retention. So let's see what's happening there. All right, so this video about consistent thumbnails got low audience retention in the first 30 seconds. Only about 54% are still watching, which is below typical. So let's see what happens here to cause this drop. So how can you get your YouTube thumbnails to look consistent and branded all over your channel, even if you are not a designer? That's what I'm gonna show you how to do today using- When I say I'm gonna show you how to do this, but then I'm just talking. I'm not actually showing an example of what a consistent thumbnail design on your channel might look like. So I'm not showing, I'm just telling. And that is causing this drop to happen at this point. One tool, I promise you it is very easy, just a few simple steps. So are you ready? Okay, and then there's a title sequence, which if you may have noticed, I have actually gotten rid of title sequences because exactly for this reason. When I look at my audience retention graphs and views are dropping and retention is dropping when title sequences are playing and there's music playing, even if it's three seconds, it is still a retention drop. And in those three seconds, you could lose a couple of percentage points in terms of retention. So um, going forward, I have eliminated all types of title sequences, music montages, video montages on the channel. Hey, go getter. It's Salma Jafri. And on this channel, I'll show you. And that's the intro sequence. Again, intro sequences are okay for a new channel. If you are just getting yourself introduced to people a couple of times, you want to have them, but with over 300 videos on my channel right, right now, I think it's time to get rid of the intro sequence as well, where I introduce myself. Um, again, this is not like something that you have to do. You have to look at your retention graph and see what's happening there and make a decision based on that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel and I'm actually gonna go into seeing what are some of my videos with the highest retention and what are some of my videos with the lowest retention? And you can do that by going into content uh, choosing videos, not shorts, and then looking here where it says key moments for audience retention. It'll tell you all of your videos which had the highest retention and all of your videos that had your lowest retention. So for example, this video that I did had only 51% audience retention. And in this video, it's basically just me talking in front of my dressing room mirror. I'm just about to get shaky footage. People did not enjoy that. I, that. Do, I realized that I wanted to talk. About and you can see there's a sh steep. I was going to say sheep. Okay, but sheep. 
ah, steep drop in retention happening. And I never tried this style again. I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. Nobody wants to see my video when I'm just like holding the camera with shaky footage. They do not want to see that. They want to see stable, clear, educational footage from me. So point taken loud and clear. Okay, I wanna show you one more example of something that absolutely does work on my channel in terms of audience retention. So this next video is called, if I were starting a YouTube channel today, here's what I would do, 68%. So one of my highest, let's watch what happens here. Ta-da, that's what happened. I walked into the frame. <laughs> That's all. So the video is starts off with me not being in the shot, but you can see my background. You can see that this is one of my videos. So you can kind of anticipate that this is going to be me. And then three seconds in, I walk into the shot. And that is what just got me high retention on this particular video. Okay. When you look at your retention graph, you really want to see what are you saying? What are you not saying? What are you doing? And what are you not doing? So it is a graph that really tells you uh, how your audience is responding to your video. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I don't know if my videos are doing well, or I don't know what parts my audience is enjoying or not. You just simply want to look at your retention graph, read your retention graph, look at the highs and lows, look at where the steep drops are, look at where it stabilizes and watch what's happening at that moment. And then it's simply from there, it's simply a matter of experimenting and trying out different styles, keeping the things that work and removing the things that don't work, experimenting to see what gels with your audience and what they want to see you doing or saying more of. Go ahead and share down in the comments below what has been your best audience retention on your video. And also if you want your worst audience retention, put it down in the comments. My best is 71% and my worst is, I don't even know, 51%, I think. So I would love to know yours. I'll see you in the next video.